The Art of Creating the Musical Line is a 10 DVD set of oboe master classes given by John Delancey, the legendary former principal oboist of the Philadelphia Orchestra, using the Barrett oboe method. This detailed educational DVD series includes John Delancey's introductory lecture, Phrasing is the Art of Defining, while playing the grammatical structure of music, which is a straightforward and thorough exposition of the concepts which underscored everything Mr. Delancey taught to his students at the Curtis Institute of Music and elsewhere. We all know that the reed, you get the sound because those two blades are flapping together, okay? Now, if you start with the premise that you've got to control that uh, dynamic, you generally are going to end up with a very stiff reed, and the only way that you can get that reed to get start vibrating is to pinch it together so that the, the two blades get down so closely together that they begin to vibrate. Although his emphasis is clearly on phrasing, Mr. Delancey's keen ear and depth of knowledge also reveal many common oboe playing problems, which can plague even the professional player. Yeah, uh, try playing on the tip of the reed. It sounds okay. like the reed is not vibrating for you. Is that the... I tried to make a spineless reed. And you tried to make a... I tried to make one of the spineless reeds. Oh, you mean spineless in the... In the, in the tip. In the tip. Yeah, well, let me see. Let me see what it looks like. Because these ideas are musically universal, and since his main emphasis is on phrasing rather than just oboe playing, any musician would benefit from viewing these master classes. Five days of master classes are included with more than 18 hours of detailed, individualized instruction given to a broad diversity of performers. The harder you have to work, the less kind of, the less real sound that you're going to get. Just because you're working hard doesn't mean that it's going to be, it, you might end up by getting a nice thick sound but that's not what we're looking for. You're looking for a sound that has flexibility and resonance within it. He provides a wide range of solutions to problems such as excessive vibrato. Uh, each one, you know, there's a little tiny difference between each one. Now try, let's just try, just play an A and see if you can make a vibrato and listen to what you're doing. So see if, the, if you can, you have, you can get some clue as to how to control it. Just play an A and hold it and make a vibrato and, ha and let's hear an, a vibrato. Embouchure. The problem with wild reeds is that there are a lot of people that can play on wild reeds and there are a lot of people that can, can do that but they're manipulating everything with their embouchure. And this gets in the way of a good line with your, with your wind. And variations in pitch. And then G sharp there, you know, in that second yeah. measure, yeah. Okay, let me hear it once more and try and play a little more on the tip of the reed and think also that you're a little bit sharp. Each of the many students who take part in these master classes provides you the viewer definition. with invaluable instruction from one of history's great so masters, your would have told you right as if away. you were attending That's the classes yourself. Part. So you start up reading. <laughs> Question and answer sessions occur at the end of nearly every DVD and cover an extremely questions. wide range of questions yes. from the audience. Some of the topics include unique circumstances that can affect an oboist during orchestral performances. And then on, say, like the third beat, you have to like hear it on that beat. And what needs to happen? Is it just an increase of vibrato to that point? Well, yeah, you, I mean, look, I, I try and use imagery a lot to, so to give you the idea. You know, music is sound in, in motion. 
the meaning of particular articulation marks in music. All the markings that they have on music, and it's, it is a, the question of markings in music is, is, is one of those situations where you can take practically any position you want, and uh, maybe you can't prove you're right, but nobody can prove you're wrong, no matter what position you take, because nobody, there's, there's no consensus. On the spot scraping and refining of an actual read. And also we John Delancey's experiences in serving in World War II. With the Germans, obviously. That's a nice way to put it in competition. And, and uh, we, were, uh, uh, we wanted to know about the German unit, our counterpart with the German unit. So when the war ended, one of the... Including meeting Richard Strauss at his home in Germany. Yes, ma'am. How did you meet Strauss? I met Strauss at the end of the war. Um, I was with, a, with a, a unit that operated primarily with radio. Now, I had joined the Philadelphia Orchestra as... As well as some of his personal and musical experiences during his days in the Philadelphia Orchestra. The associate in that I played half of the season. My, I played first half of the season because he didn't want to play. And when um, the manager of the orchestra heard about this, they wrote the manager also, and the manager came to talk to me about it. The bonus lecture, The History of Pitch as it Relates to the Modern Day Symphonic Oboist, is also included in the DVD set. I'm going to read you what uh, um, a little lecture that I uh, prepared years ago that I used to deliver at the Curtis Institute for my students and both oboe and wind students and um, I want you to understand this is not a scientific <laughs> treatise by any means. Although some of the information may surprise you it basically covers the 300 year history of the irregular arbitrary but generally constant rise of the pitch of orchestras starting back in the 1700s and continuing through the modern day. So do the high pitch of the Albert Hall concert organ, which was pitched at 454. This chart, now I think of this one, this next chart gives the pitches that existed in the Paris, Berlin, and St. Petersburg operas from, eight, from 1700 to 1859, and you see 1700 18, in uh, Paris, 404 at the Paris Opera, and then it kept going up. Berlin in 1750 is 421.